Hello and welcome back to the South China Morning Post Fantasy Premier League video podcast. Uh, we're here for a look back at week three and a look ahead at week four. Uh, I'm your host Jonathan White. I'm here with Sam Agars this week. Johnny, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? Very well. Pleasure to be here as always. Well, let's crack on and have a look at our fantasy Absolutely. league teams. Start with yours. Not a great week at the back, but 57 points. Can take that. Not a bad effort at all on a week where a lot of teams were down. Yeah, Salah and Kane, Zaha, Firmino, still performing. Trippier, obviously, coming great. Uh, disappointment from Mendy and Edison letting a goal in at Wolves. Yeah. Not all great. No, well, probably not expected, was it? No, and then Richarlison. Yeah. What a wally. Yeah, what a wally. Uh, let's have a look at your team. Yeah, not quite 57 points here, Johnny, but still a decent spread. Obviously, Richarlison hurts. Aguero blanking is probably the big one there after his week before. 46 points. I'm still pretty happy with the cattle that I've got and I think we move onwards and upwards. Let's have a look at where that leaves us in the league table. If we look closely, Johnny, we'll see that I'm here in fifth and down here is you. Okay, I want to point out that there are 27 teams in this league table. I'm in the top third, yeah. we're three weeks in and I'm expecting big things over the coming 35. You think your lacklustre approach to bringing in players <laughs> willy-nilly is going to finally pay off at some point? Uh, I think my lacklustre approach may have changed but we'll come to that later. Um, this looks like a lacklustre approach. Well, 46 points on the bench is the same as what I had on my field, so that's got a sting. It's something that can really transform a season if you have those points on your field, but can do so in the opposite way if you've got them on your, on your bench. Would you have left these fellas on your bench? Well, uh, Lucas Moore, I mean, maybe a very good player, but his fantasy output was yet to be proven, so we can't really go too hard on that one. Okay, so France World Cup winning captain, Lloris. Highly rated Nathan Ake, Lucas Moura, who's been involved in a lot of goals and assists the last few games. Um, Mitrovic, who was tipped last week, right here, um, you'd have left them on the bench. Good, good to know that, Sam. You left. You didn't even put Mitrovic on your team, so... I, I can know he's going to be good without breaking the bank to put him in. For sure. Let's um, move on, shall we? Yeah, the manager of the week. Again, Moura. Yeah, there he is with a C as well. I mean. Luck or genius? If, if they've done that purposely, that is a, a great move, but I tend to put that one down to a little bit more luck than anything else. Okay. Uh, Mitrovic featuring again. Alonso, Trippier, Robertson. Yeah, a couple of the usual suspects at the back there. The players down the back, there's been a lot of points in the back line this season, so cashing in on those guys, I think if you can get them in, if you can afford to have them there, is a, is a really good can, can give you a very good foundation. Is that an approach you're going to take? Uh, I've got Robertson there and I've, I've got Mendy who's been good. I think it'd be, it'd be nice to get Trivier. Alonso at this stage for me is probably a little bit out of my reach. Okay. Any of these lads, the, the best team of the week? Any of these lads you're looking at? I think Harry Kane's the worry. Everyone wrote him off at the start of the season, said he, well, he couldn't score in August and that's been proven in the past and he's bucked that trend quite magnificently. Uh, scores haven't been huge, but I think the ceiling for him is, is huge, as we all know, so he's one that we need to, to look at, especially if Aguero doesn't, doesn't bring the points that he did last week. And you're not willing to take the risk on Mitrovic? Not at this stage, I don't think. I think my team is, is settled enough. OK, um, Harry Kane playing in September this week, so should score. Absolutely, and Tottenham seem to be starting to roll on. Players are getting their fitness back. But there was a few that had a longer break after the World Cup, and I can, as good a start as they've had, I think they're going to con continue, or if not improve, a little bit. And looking at these players at the back here, Keane, Monreal, Maguire, would you bring any of them in for your back line? Uh, I think I'd leave Maguire this week, obviously, with Liverpool there, and, and Keane, it sounds like he's, he's out for a few weeks with an injury. Monreal plays for Arsenal, who we all know aren't very good, so at this stage I think don't get too caught up with the fad, just just push on with, with your original plan. Push on. Uh, speaking of pushing on, the players are going to have to do that, especially Man United. Yeah, can they? Uh, probably not. No. My advice would be don't pick any of them. Do not pick any Man United players. Certainly not David De Gea. And don't put your captain on him like our esteemed colleague. Nicholas Atkin has recommended on more than one occasion, I believe. And will be soon back to recommend again, no doubt. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, any of these matches stand out for you? I like Chelsea. I think there's some points. They've started the season well, and I think guys like Azad and uh, maybe Morata might start to, to produce more, more so moving forward. So I'd have a look at them this week. Uh, what about Fulham away at Brighton? See any points in that? Uh, well, Fulham, have, they proved on the weekend that they can score goals. They know how to find the back of the net, and, and Brighton 
traditionally can be a bit leaky, so yeah, absolutely. I think some of the, the guys that got in on the act on the weekend can continue it on. Uh, Wolves have been good so far. You fancy them at West Ham? Uh, interesting one. West Ham, I think the, the potential's there, but they, they have had a patchy start of the season. You seem to be a Wolves fan, Johnny. What, what do you think they can bring this week? Well, I'd say Wolves, they, they played really well against Man City. Their players look like they're hungry for, for goals. That's, that's going to be a, a good a goodbye getting some Wolves players in. My word. Um, this fella. This fella. Yeah, had a bit of a funny week last week. He did. I think he was a little stiff with that, if we can call it a headbutt. It was a, it was fairly soft and I think he was fairly unlucky, firstly to be sent off and secondly to be missing the next two weeks. I think we will call it a headbutt because he tried to headbutt someone. It's not allowed in uh, the English Premier League. Don't know about <laughs> down under in your Australian football. Maybe that's part of the course. Maybe just turn a blind eye for that one for fantasy purposes, Johnny. What do you think? Um, so what are you going to do with Richarlison? Well, I think the obvious one for me is to go straight across to Walcott because maybe potentially we well, started the season well. Obviously, potentially there will be more opportunities for him there with with Richarlison on the sideline and similarly priced. That that seems an obvious one. And you don't have to think about whether you're going to have too many players from other clubs. If you get another Everton player in, you're going to be all right. I think so. Yeah, that they've started the season well. There's goals in them. I think I can afford to have an Everton player there, yes. Okay. What other transfers are you going to make? I think that could be it. The, the only other option I was looking at was potentially taking to Richarlison down to Neves and then looking at doing one of my, taking one of my budget backs up to someone like Trivier, maybe to shore things up back there. But we'll just see how that goes. I'm leaning towards Walcott. Okay, well I'll tell you what I am going to do. And that is, uh, I'm going to call it the fourth week twist. Um, <laughs> I've used my 11 point advantage, I've taken it down to a minus one point advantage for the week, I've spelt 12 points, I've got rid of John Stones, I've brought in Marcos Alonso because I feel he's going to get more and more points, and then on top of that I've taken out Johnny, uh, I've taken out Vinagre, I've taken out John Joe Shelby, and I've brought in some new faces. Do you think anyone in their right mind, Johnny, would see it in their the need to ship 12 points for, for basically Alonso when a player like Richarlison is going to be stuck on the bench for two weeks and then come back to what I believe is a fairly tough game week when he returns. Uh, he's going to prove his, his, his talents, much like I will prove mine with this bold move. Uh, you've seen how people have got points. Captain Lucas Moura. Yes. Um, by Mitrovic. It, it's time for change. So bumbling your way through is the method that you think you'll continue to take from here on in. Absolutely. Uh, and we'll find out next week. Indeed we will, Johnny. Hopefully you'll join us then. Thanks, Sam. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.